Hi there, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, and I'd like to welcome you to our very first video chat we're calling Gun Cranks Live. I'm joined by American Handgunner editor Tom McHale, who is there or through the magic hey, of video, he's there, <laughs> and our boss and publisher, Roy Huntington. Hi, you guys. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about something that is kind of on everybody's mind, the idea of best weapon for home defense. Now, there's lots of discussion about this on the internet, but we felt like with our experience, we ought to throw our two cents in here. So by, being, by virtue of being the host, I'm going to go first. My weapon of choice is the shotgun. Now, people say it's an anachronism. I say I am too, but... I still think this is the best weapon for home defense. What there, you can't you can't aim or what? <laughs> that's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> On, this is a Remington 887. It's uh, the gun that I literally keep under my bed. The only thing I don't like about it, it's got that thing that'll chop your fingers off, and I haven't fixed that yet. But other than that, it's a pretty good weapon for self defense. I've got mine tricked out. We've got a uh, Streamlight ProTac. Need the light. We've got an EOTech green holographic sight, and I know some people will, will disparage my choice of an EOTech, but their quality control issues of a few years ago have been fixed. I'm a big fan of these. I've used them in critical situations, so that's what I've got on my home defense gun. Of course, you got to have a sling. you got to have some spare ammo. So if I have to repel borders at my house, it's the shotgun. Not bad. Yeah, not but, bad. You know what? I, but I'll what confess, does he know? <laughs> I've I've one nearby too. So okay. So so Roy, what's your choice? Well, you know, I think it's a a no brainer in my situation here because I have a Desert Eagle fifty A and E, which I I mean to me it just seems that that's what's most appropriate. Now I know that it's not a nine millimeter. I, yeah, at any level, and I realize that, but the I think, not compensating or anything. I, no, but I think it it okay. probably could could compete at some level. So no, but seriously, <laughs> folks, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. I live on 30 acres, and I've got what I like to call a 360 degree free field of fire zone. And uh, so I have rifles and shotguns and all that other stuff, but this is the actual sits next to my bed every day. It's a very early Smith and Wesson M and P nine, uh, nine millimeter that holds 8 million rounds. Uh, it's got a light on the front. Yeah. About 8 million rounds nice. and uh, no safety. So it's a no brainer kind of a thing. So if something goes bump in the night or the dog growls, uh, you just get up and wipe the sleep out of your eyes. But you know, <laughs> while I got you something that I want to add into that is that in all seriousness is that you need to have a pair of electronic earmuffs sitting right next to your gun. So that way, when you wake up at nighttime, you put those on first and then you can have Superman hearing and you can hear That's the, point. you know, good yeah, point. you can have the creak, you hear the sounds out there. And more importantly is you need, if you, if you have a wife, you need to make sure she puts a pair on too, because that way you guys can talk to each other. You can hear if, God forbid you actually do some shooting. So especially if you're, of, if you're if you're shooting a rifle, which which Tom would do, so the entire house, including the bad guy, would be deaf. And the so. neighbors and the dogs <laughs> and the <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I will officially hand off to Mr. McHale. Well, I have a I have a two part system, you know, as my primary. And uh, you know, surprised you guys didn't think of this, but the very first thing uh, put good by point, my bed. Good point. I like hate that. a smart ass. Like he thinks he knows everything. No, no, no. But seriously, I think you guys will agree with this. This is a good, I am being a smart ass, but it's a good yeah. point. Uh, cell phone, no landline on the charger every night. Kill two birds with one stone, right? I got a freshly charged phone in the morning and I have something that, that works in the middle of the night. So and plus you have an emergency backup flashlight. And there you go. There you go. And a flashlight. So, uh, but seriously, guns, I'm a, boy, I kind of have to agree with you on this whole thing. Cause I, I choose a handgun too. It's just that mine's bigger. Ah, <laughs> Who's compensating now? As <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, eight, I think you said yours has 8 million rounds. This has 13 trillion. It, God. Well, I think I counted it, but it's somewhere in there yeah. actually. But seriously, this is a, um, uh, pistol, an AR pistol that I've been working with recently on some projects. And this one is a Springfield Armory uh, Saint Edge. It's kind of their souped up AR pistol and uh, lots of reasons I like it. You know, it's still fairly compact. You can carry the thing around with one hand if you need to. Um, but the, the real benefit of it is a longer gun profile like this is easier to shoot under stress. I mean, 
you're talking about getting hits on a target, just having that, that long sight radius, whether or not you have an optic on the thing, uh, much easier to shoot and handle. And the 13 trillion round capacity is not a bad deal either. So. You know, Tom, you, and you're right uh, that we did some training where the, the uh, pistol guys were, were capping on the long gun guys saying, oh, no, you're, somebody will grab your muzzle and, and, you know, as you go around a corner. But actually, and anybody at home can try this out, is take a handgun and, and do an isosceles stance and put yeah. it out and then hold one of these short barreled rifles yeah. up and actually the muzzle's out at exactly the same point. Maybe even closer, depending closer. on you know yeah. how you're doing it. So, and if well, and if you if train you want an alternative approach to the uh, the earphones, I like the bionic hearing. That's a really good point. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to keep things a little quieter, you can always pop <laughs> something on the end. You know, I've kind of found with the pist- the AR pistol platform, by the time you stick a suppressor on the end, it kind of works out to about the same as a regular AR rifle. So, there's your trade off. And if you do any training, it's pretty easy to resolve the problem of somebody grabbing the end of your firearm. You go to one knee and then press and repeat as necessary. <laughs> you know, Tom, your idea of the suppressor, I, I agree 100%. It, it's brilliant. And, uh, but I'm wondering, uh, you know, maybe we should push for some legislation as a sort of a home defense suppressor law. You know, in other words, more sense. palatable. Yeah, your your powers. Yeah, you make it a little easier to buy. Maybe it doesn't cost as much in, with the tax thing, but maybe a caveat is, you know, you can only use it at the range and at home. You know, you can't transport it around or go hunting with it. I mean, I don't mind. I would take the hit for uh, defining the use a little bit yeah. in order to get it more available. You know, the, to that's a good point. The PR behind that is really good. The messaging behind that, it's, it can't be more defensive than that. No. And, and don't tell anybody, but you know what I really like about that? Right. It's an incremental step. I could get one win and then we go for the next win, right? So it is, Good I point. think so. so. Y'all don't think we're going to be happy with that as the end all, right? That's, <laughs> that's step one. Now, you know, uh, oh, go I got to say that I'm feeling left out here. I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into what I'm sure you guys will get to. So the best defense is a good offense ammunition capacity. You guys have talked about it. Yeah, I've only got. 10, 12, 14 rounds or whatever. But do you need more than that, especially when you're putting hundreds of grains across the room? Counterpoint? Mm, I don't know. There's a a lady not too long ago in Florida, a then pregnant housewife, fought off two armed guys with pistols with with one of these. Really? Had lots of, yeah, sure did, right outside of Tampa. And uh, they came in and got her husband and Pistol whipped him and kicked him and did all kinds of damage, kind of put him out of the fight pretty quickly. And uh, she ran off and grabbed the AR and handled the problem. I think she shot like 20 yeah. rounds, as I recall, yeah. like emptied that magazine. Quite a few. Uh, you know, I, I think you guys definitely have the win as far as shootability and control. And I think for uh, an average homeowner, if there's such a thing, who aren't really willing to devote a fairly significant amount of time to training with a handgun, I tend to agree completely. Uh, taking your environment into into play, you know, if you're in a condo in the city, maybe, you know, a rifle isn't most appropriate, but yeah. certainly a shotgun loaded with, you know, number four buck or, or a sporting load. Uh, but I think... Having like being more of a generalist, though, and having something easily accessible in all three categories probably makes the most sense. As Clint Smith was always fond of saying, handguns are really good. There you go. You know, handguns, handguns are really good to fight your way to your right. Everybody's rifle. got one. <laughs> <Yeah>, Everybody <laughs> has one. Uh, I think, you know, Brett and I, you and I are all retired cops. And anytime I've ever needed my gun when I was a policeman and even a few times otherwise, I've needed it right now. I really yeah. didn't have time to go hunt for something or go find my rifle or something like that. And I think yeah. home defense guns are actually a lot like that. I actually have two readily accessible home defense guns. And one is a Ruger LCP2 uh, 380 that I keep in my pocket all the time, yeah. everywhere I go, no matter what I'm doing, it's always there in my pocket. And so, you know, that, that handles that have a gun problem if you're in a yep. gunfight. And that's what yep. a handgun does next to your bed at night. So, but gosh, there's a lot more than just the guns, right? I mean, you guys yep. weighed in on that. I think the gun is sort of the final option. I think there's some other things people need to, to think about. Well, Can we exactly. talk about lights for a minute? That's where I was yeah. going. So take I, know, I know for a fact, I don't even have to ask. I, I'll bet a thousand trillion dollars that both of you guys have one of these on your nightstand or something like it. 
Yeah. 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 How, how many on the night? Not connected to a gun, right? <laughs> Not connected. Yeah. Because yeah, what yeah. is it? One is none and two is one. Is none. Yeah. You know? Well, and you know, there's lots of home emergency types. There's fire. There's a tree falling on your house. There's a coyote in the yard. Who knows? You know, um, this is a good way to find out what's going on without pointing a weapon at somebody or something that's that's still unknown. You know? may, yeah. may I add one more thing too, which is when, the, as soon as the, uh, uh, virus fiasco is over here and you're allowed to go shopping again is I want everyone who's listening or watching to this to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy the biggest, nastiest fire extinguisher they can find yeah. and yeah. bring that home and sit it next to your bed. Because as Tom said, the real emergency that's going to happen here is probably a home fire or, you know, yeah. or something like that. And so if you have a big fire extinguisher next to your bed, then you can fight your way out of the fire. You can rescue your family. And not one of those little teeny tiny ones. I mean something big honk and, you know, nasty commercial size fire extinguisher. Plus, you can always squirt some bad guy with it, which would really be an uncomfortable. Well, it's like turbo pepper spray, right? Or yeah, something. kind of turbo pepper spray. Yeah. Although I have to challenge you on that. I don't see why you would possibly need a fire extinguisher. Can't you just call the fire department? <laughs> well, there's that. Let me get my exactly tongue out right. of my cheek. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Stuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like I, calling I know, the policeman. Yeah. I know where Roy lives and your response time would be measured in what? Hours? Decades? Yeah. No, it'd be measured in where the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I did want to circle back on uh, lights. Uh, I tell a story and, and when I've taught before and it really drives it home. You also really need a light on your weapon and all of ours mm -hmm. do. And I have a good example of that. Years ago, I was living out in the country and my son was in high school and I heard some noise one night and, you know, the prudent thing would be to call the police. Well, I was the police. So, of course, I grabbed my yeah. trusty shotgun and away I go. I went out the front door after kind of checking the area and trying to figure out what it was. And I, I got outside and I'm stealthily checking my property and I heard a noise and I immediately spin, light up my light, challenge the person. It was my son. Yeah. Turns oh. out that uh, uh, some of his friends were toilet papering in the neighborhood and he knew that. <laughs> and he had come out the back door because he was afraid I was going to, you know, shoot, kill, maim or whatever his friends, but he didn't bother to tell me. So when I went around the garage, I had my light on and of course I wasn't on target. So I didn't have my finger on the trigger, but still pointing a weapon at your family member is not a good day, but I'm just so happy that I chose to do what you, you should do and have a light on your weapon because that's what's really going to save you uh, from having a tragedy. So that's oh. kind of a downer, but it's, it's a direct practical application that I lived and to this day I've still got goosebumps over it. I noticed you had one on your shotgun and it looked like Roy had one on the handgun you held up on that Smith & Wesson. Yep. Yeah, and you're right. I, I do too. There's one on the uh, AR and the Beretta that I held up. Well, you know, and, and I, I'm not, I'm rarely more than an arm's distance away from another flashlight, not counting the one you have in your pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would like, speaking of flashlights, though, is that with, with modern uh, battery technology, with the lithium rechargeable batteries, I think modern uh, tactical flashlights have finally overcome a problem that used to exist in the old days, which was, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a policeman, it was all, uh, what were they, NICAD batteries, I guess. Yeah. And it just seemed invariably when you needed it your light, work. it didn't yeah. work. And so yeah. I was a strong proponent of having at least the, my backup light have real batteries in it. And yeah, yeah. even though the modern lithium ones really s seem to be pretty effective and they hold their charge for a long time, I still keep my secondary light next to my bed is a high intensity flashlight loaded with CR one, two, three batteries. Yeah. And yep. Because you just know the darn thing's probably going to work when you pick it up. Yep. Yeah. And another factor to think about too is I don't know what you sleep in and I don't want to know, but <laughs> if you're like many of us and you just sleep in pajama bottoms or underwear or in, and you're all together, if you have to get up and go check something, have you got a way to carry your spare flashlight, your spare magazine, your cell phone? Probably not. Um, yeah. I'm sure Tom could come up with some ways of doing that if you're not wearing anything. But a part of my ensemble is I have a uh, small uh, over-the-shoulder bag that regardless of what I've got on, it sits like next to the purse. bed. Right. A man purse, a small okay. one that I now can just know. throw over. Uh, it's actually, <laughs> I hate to say this, it's a fanny pack. It's a small okay. fanny pack, but you can loop it right over your neck <laughs> and you've got reloads, you've got a spare flashlight. Yep. If you want to throw your cell phone in there, it's, it's good to go. 
So that's a, a wonderful idea. I actually designed something some years ago, which was uh, put in production for a little while. Uh, but hopefully this will get people to think about it. And, and all it was, was just a simple bag that you put around your neck and there was a magazine pouch. There was a, a pouch for your cell phone and there was a flashlight pouch. And then on the back, I had him put a pouch for a quick clot, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, for first aid. And, uh, and it was interesting. I, I, I talked to a guy who was a, a back from combat and he said, he said, y'all need to put a bottle of water in there too. Cause you get really thirsty. <laughs> and I thought, you know, he's right. <laughs> yep. in, the, in the 30 seconds of the incident, right? Yep. <laughs> that, yeah. That's absolutely true. You have that massive adrenaline dump. And after things are kind of calm, you're like, I oh, man. really need a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, let's see, are, are we missing anything here? I think training, I mean, you know, it, it, it goes without saying, but let's say it anyway. And that even if it's watching videos that on a FMG YouTube channel, we have a lot of videos about a lot. basic firearm safety training, how to use your sights, trigger control, mm-hmm. some basic tactic stuff. But that's only barely scratching the top of it. Uh, as witnessed by Brent's encounter, I mean, had he not had the presence of mind, good, you know, product or uh, target, uh, you know, definition, trigger control, muzzle safety. I mean, who knows where that could have happened. And if you're someone who doesn't really train, remember that old saying that if you don't train, when something happens, you'll revert to your training, which is nothing. Nothing. And and so you won't know how to affect, you know, how to be effective. And, you know, I just thought of something that uh, it, it doesn't fall in the whole tactical realm and guns, but, you know, something that is real critical to me, my bedroom is right off the front door. I have an alarm. A, uh, it's one of these cheap $10 uh, motion sensors that I mount on our porch facing the doorway so that in the middle of the night, if somebody comes to my door and would be intent on trying to get in, I give at least a few seconds of a really ear splitting warning. So I've also got an alarm system for the house and, and all that. But I, for whatever reason, I usually depend on that one because it is so loud. It's right next to the bed. And like mm-hmm. I said, it was, it was 10 bucks and I've got one by the back door. So I at least get uh, that redundant warning that there may be uh, people afoot because in my case, I figure my porch is kind of, it's a, uh, an enclosed almost porch. So somebody could be in there for a minute or two kind of psyching up or coming up with a plan or whatever before the alarm would ever go off. So if you've got some way, like I said, those things are 10 bucks at, at any big box store, you can mount it where they wouldn't see it and it would alert you. I just think that's prudent. Mm-hmm. Can, idea. can, can let's, uh, let's go on record how, and let's do a follow up to this one and let's talk about some specific things people could do to, to harden their target, you know, cause I oh, think yeah. the, in a perfect world, not having them get inside. So you need to use your gun is of course a lot perfect. better. Yeah. And, uh, I, I spent a segment of my police career addressing neighborhood watch groups about, you know, how do you harden your target? How do you, what do you mm-hmm. do around your house? Yep. And your tip about the alarm is great. Uh, yeah. I put one of those ring doorbell things up a mm-hmm. while ago. Those are They're good. a couple hundred bucks. They hook up to your Wi-Fi. This one's battery controlled. It lasts for weeks. And I have to say, it's just unbelievable how convenient. If anybody comes to your door, your yeah. phone tells you. I mean, yep. what a security thing. What a first line of defense. And so, you can see it. And you can see who's there and talk to them. Going on. Yep. Oh, yeah. I've answered my door when I've been hundreds of miles away, and <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. So, uh, well, Roy, I'll give you a slow pitch as one retired cop to another. Everybody hardens their door and, you know, puts all kinds of stuff on it. What's the part of the door that breaks when somebody puts a shoulder or foot into it? <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. It's the jam. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny you should say that because I actually have used my advanced metalworking skills Mm -hmm. and I've got a one inch wide by quarter inch thick, uh, about 12 inch long piece of strap steel that I've lag screwed on the inside edge of the door jam. Yeah. Just because of that. Yeah. Yep. I've got nice. all, you can buy them, but if you've got the machining skills like Roy, just reinforce the strike and make sure if you look, most of them are screws about that long and they go into soft pine. And yeah, that's why screws. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brent, can you just whip some up right now? I see you got a shot behind you there. Yeah, oh, I just could. Get out there. How to do that? <laughs> the guns magazine front door <laughs> locker thingy. So, yeah. we'll make a million let's, dollars selling those. Let's follow up though with something, and and yeah. uh, let's cover some some specifics, but easy things that people can actually do. Yeah. Yeah. Like cutting their shrubs back. 
you know, yeah. Yeah. putting Hiding a few an lights in. You bet. <laughs> and and of course, man's best friend, an animal, whether that be a dog, uh, you know, a, a Komodo dragon, whatever you choose, as long as it lets you know. And actually, a big dog is more reassuring. But you know what the best watchdogs are? Oh, so yeah. These little cotton ball looking yap yap dogs. They're noisy. They bark at everything. <laughs> <laughs> how did we? How did we go from shotguns to yap yap there's, dogs? There's your motion sensor Pekingese. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, exactly. I think we beat this into the ground here, guys. Have we? I would agree. Yeah. So it's been great talking to you guys on our first Gun Cranks Live. We hope everybody enjoys watching these, and please let us know. You can reach me at editor at gunsmagazine.com you can reach roy and tom at editor at americanhandgunner.com check out our other great youtube videos on our youtube channel and of course gunsmagazine.com and americanhandgunner.com on behalf of roy huntington and tom McHale, i'm brent wheat stay safe and then get out there and get shooting bye bye <laughs>